The latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is, is one of our core values. It's even a part of our mission statement. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to Double Tap TV. Thank you guys, as always, for being here each and every single week. If you want to get involved, like we ask you every single time, it is feedback at ami.ca. We welcome your email anytime on any topic, especially feedback and ideas. Uh, on Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada. Don't forget to follow us there if you are not already. And on Instagram, we are at doubletap.online. We have lots of really cool stuff on Instagram as well. Thank you guys for being here. I am Mark of Lalo. By my side each and every single week is Stephen Scott. Stephen, we're talking about something interesting this week because when you called me up and said, Mark, let's talk dictation devices, I, I responded with, doesn't my phone just do that? <laughs> oh, you're so naive, Mark. You're so naive. Uh, well, you're right, actually. No, you are absolutely right. Your phone can do it. And look, you don't need any hardware to do this. Uh, you could just use an app on your phone and you'd be fine. There's many built-in apps on iOS and Android you can use. But there are some benefits to having some hardware. First of all, reliability, right? I mean, what if your battery goes in your phone while you're recording a lecture at uni or, you know, perhaps you don't get the, the length of recording time you want or the audio quality doesn't work or you get a call in the middle of it which cuts off the mic for recording. Lots of things can go wrong, right? So a dedicated device can be something that is beneficial. Uh, so, you know, there are lots of options available. I've got tons here, Mark. Do you want to see what I've got here? I've got lots of stuff. I do, but I want to make a comparison first because it's. I had a conversation with my wife on the weekend and we were talking about um, making a calendar for our kids' school. And, mm -hmm. you know, someone brought up the fact saying, who, who uses a paper calendar these days? Everybody has a digital device. Every, and the funny thing is, is that we, we called a bunch of people, a bunch of friends and other, other schools and other parents. And we said, do you guys have, you know, a physical calendar at your home? And they said, absolutely. Everybody is still sticking to their pen and paper physical agendas. It's actually few and far between those people that only live that digital life. So when it comes to options other than using your phone or your watch for things like dictation, I totally get it. There's trust in a pen and paper, isn't there? I mean, you can't delete it. Well, not unless you tip a cup of tea or coffee over it. Uh, you know, it's not going to go away anywhere. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I must admit, I'm a tech guy. So, you know, the idea of pen and paper terrifies me because I, I know plenty of people who've left their diary on a train or their calendar or their even their whole, you know, bag of, of goodies on a train and that's it. It's gone forever. Whereas, you know, if it's on a phone, it's automatically backed up to the cloud. You've always got access to that data. So your personal data remains with you, even if the device itself goes and it's encrypted as well so you don't have to worry about someone else getting it and getting access to your your information that's of course if you've set everything up properly but that's for another show maybe we should do a show on that you know how to <laughs> not you know not to lose everything in your life at once but you know it is an interesting topic especially around note taking a lot of blind people love to do this and you know not just blind people obviously everyone wants to take a note from time to time and like you say grabbing a piece of paper and a pen, you probably still do that to this day, despite all the tech that's around you. I bet you're a pen and paper guy in the office with post-it notes everywhere. You know, I, I, I have one near me, but <laughs> I try not to. I try to use services like Microsoft Teams and To Do and all these little note-taking apps. I try to use them. I try to use, uh, you know, the Amazon's built-in grocery mm. list feature, the reminders list feature, but I find myself gravitating towards that good old pen and paper. However, I could tell you categorically that my kids no, no. will not. They will go to technology first before anything else because that's how they learned first. So I think that has a lot to do with what we're gonna be talking about today, which is dictation devices. And please don't tell me that you have any that we're gonna talk about today that still use a physical cassette. Oh, do you know, I was looking for my old cassette tape. <laughs> in fact, I've got, I've got it lying somewhere uh, where I've got my old cassette tape. I used to have the one, remember those little micro cassettes you would get? I do. I love those. And, you know, I've got a range of devices here I'm going to show you. And there are a lot of different ways to do it. You know, audio is definitely one. And for that, I tend to drift towards Olympus. Uh, Olympus created a range of dictation devices for a number of years now, which have got what's called voice guidance built in. Now, the one I'm holding in my hand at the moment is the Olympus DM770. And this is probably one of the last devices that will have this feature, sadly. The devices themselves are dying out in popularity, and so is the accessibility, sadly, as well. Um, but yes, this is uh, a standard 
dictation device, you've got a simple record system of record and stop, and that is it. And it, it gathers together your notes. You can even put them in folders. You can do all kinds of fun stuff. Even charging is dead easy because you've got an inbuilt, which just pops out the bottom, USB port that just pops right out the bottom, and you can plug it straight into your computer for data or for charging up. Now, if you are perhaps a blind person who makes music or wants to record higher quality audio, then something like this might not cut it. This is more, I mean, the microphones in here are very good, great quality, but you might want a bit better quality. Maybe you like to listen to high quality music. High res is a big deal for a lot of us, and being able to listen to that really high quality audio. That's where something that the Olympus LSP4 comes in. I'm holding that in my hand right now. It's a beautiful black color, very chic design, a little bit heavier than the DM770. And it just has a bit of a, a quality feel that's just a bit different, a bit more premium, certainly reflected in the price as well. This is about $100 more than the DM770. But this has got high res capability. It's got full stereo capability of recording as well. Uh, beautiful recordings come off this. Again, exactly the same as the 770. It's got that pop-out USB at the bottom and you're able to charge and also transfer back to your PC or Mac or whatever device you want to use. Uh, you can transfer this uh, data back over and you can also transfer to the device your high-res audio files to listen to uh, via Bluetooth or via a wired headset. So you know that's two examples in the audio world but very quickly I just want to touch on some of the other ways that I personally take notes. Uh, two ways actually and both are text entry. So I have with me here uh, this little finite case that I got for my, uh, I, my Magic Keyboard my uh, Magic Keyboard 2 actually to be precise, uh, which is the Apple keyboard and I've got it in this little case. I can connect this via Bluetooth to my iPhone and I can type my notes and I actually use my phone with a keyboard because I use voiceover. I'm able to navigate my phone using this. So I'm able to navigate the phone, do everything I would want to do, respond to emails, do everything else, but also take notes on the move as well. And I can do exactly the same whether I'm on my PC or on my iPhone using my uh, and I've got to say I love this particular one, the Focus 14 Braille display, which has uh, got uh, 14 cells of Braille display in here, so I don't have to listen to audio. I can read it in Braille, or I can take the entry, uh, I can text entry via these uh, Perkins style keys as well. So there's a range of ways to do it. Uh, a lot of people might not think about that, Mark. I'm, I'm sure you didn't. No, and you know, those are the companies like Panasonic that are still making, of course, you know, dictation devices as well, plus some other companies. And later on in the show, I want to talk to you about some high let high end, you know, uh, in our audio broadcasting world, there's a company called Zoom uh, that make a handy recorder that could be great for dictation as well. So I want to talk about the accessibility of that as well. But we need to take a break because when we come back, we're going to be talking about an app called Just Press Record, and the developers are on deck and waiting to speak to not only you, but myself as well. It is Double Tap TV. He is Stephen Scott. I am Mark Aflalo. We take a quick break and come back with that interview. Love Double Tap TV? Listen to AMI-audio for Double Tap Canada every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for news and reviews on everything tech. This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. Thank you guys for getting involved each and every single week on Twitter. We are at Double Tap Canada. Don't forget to follow us there and use the hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. By email, no problem. Feedback at ami.ca, and we'll get back to you each and every single week. I am Mark Aflalo. Alongside me, Stephen Scott. Stephen, I thought when we were talking about dictation devices this week that we'd be focusing solely on the hardware. That's why I brought up Zoom and Panasonic. But you want to talk about an app. Is that not right? Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm a huge fan of this app. And uh, while I love all the dictation devices I was telling you about today, there are some apps out there that really make it easy to take notes, but also offer additional functionality as well that a standard dictation device can't do. Uh, let me introduce our guest this week. It's uh, Gordon Morrison from Open Planet Software, based right here in my native land of Scotland. Uh, Gordon, welcome to Double Tap TV. Not at all. Pleasure to be here. So tell us about the app that you've created called Just Press Record. Okay, um, well, Just Press Record is a simple to use audio recording app and it runs on iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch and the Mac. It syncs your recording between your devices and it transcribes whatever you say into text, which can then be searched for or whatever. 
Um, it's all about being able to start recording quickly. So as well as the app, there's a widget, there's an Apple Watch complication, there's a Siri shortcut, and they're all designed to start a recording with as little friction as possible. Now, Just Press Record is not an app designed specifically or exclusively for blind people, but a lot of thought has been put into the accessibility side of things. So our voiceover experience, um, we strive to make that every bit as usable as the visual interface as well. Now, your company, Open Planet Software, has been around since, what, 2007? Interestingly, a year before Apple announced the App Store for iPhones. Yeah, back in 2008. Uh, later, of course, it appeared for the Mac uh, App Store. Um, how did you end up creating an audio recording app, Gordon? The story behind Just Press Record, um, it actually came, came from, um, I was one of the, the Cub Scout leaders, our local Cub Scouts, and we were making a video project and we needed a really simple way to record voiceovers um, for about 25 kids in about 90 minutes. So uh, that's quite, quite a tall order. <laughs> um, so we couldn't expect the kids to be worrying about naming files and saving things to folders and all that kind of stuff. So what we really needed was a really simple app. Um, so being a developer, I thought I, I could do something there. So um, I wrote a very simple Mac app with a big red button on the screen the kids just had to press the button, say their piece, press the button to stop, and that was it. Now, Gordon, since you launched on other platforms, most notably the Mac desktop and even the Apple Watch, um, which was a bit of a first in that device, wait, wait, where was that? That was back in 2015? Um, in June of that year, at Apple's developer conference, Apple announced um, WatchOS 2, um, and one of the features of WatchOS 2 was going to be developer access to the watch microphone. That hadn't been possible in WatchOS 1. Um, so we had just released Just Press Record for the Mac, and here was this, you know, thing on your wrist that you could use as a as a microphone. So, you know, we thought this is going to be really cool. We're gonna we're gonna try this. Um, and also, um, something we've always wanted to do was to be first with something. Um, so we reckoned we had an opportunity to be first to market with a, a, a voice recorder for the Apple Watch. Um, so we spent that summer um, from June to September. And building the iOS app and the watchOS app, and um, we were we were able to get there um, for the launch of watchOS too. You mentioned earlier that while Just Press Record wasn't built with the blind community in mind, it was rapidly adopted by us. What was your reaction to that? And even perhaps think back to that reaction of your first call from a blind customer asking you about the app. If you can recount that tale for us, I, th I think it was it was just the realization that. There was there was this group of people that we didn't really know much about. We we knew that they were out there, but and they were so. Um, the, the guy that I'm thinking of, he was just so helpful and so happy to help. It was, it it was a pleasure, you know, to to hear from these people, have the suggestions, and have a dialogue back and forth about how we could help and um, how we could make our product better. You know, he was so generous with his time. Um, it was, it was. It was great, really. You know, and that really did have an impact on your thinking, not only about the accessibility, but I'm guessing the overall design of the app, didn't it? And I think it's really useful for other developers, Mark, who may be watching this to understand what you guys did with the Apple Watch, for example, in particular, that made it look as good as it could be, but also fully accessible. Gordon, can you maybe talk about the work you did there? After we did the first couple of versions of Just Press, Just Press Record, um, by about 2017, we were ready to do a brand new design for Just Press Record, which is very much the design you see today. Um, and as well as designing a brand new user interface for it, it gave us the opportunity to start an accessibility design um, from the ground up. So rather than adding accessibility to what was there, we were able to think of accessibility almost as a parallel user interface to the visual um, right, right, from the, right from the beginning. Um, and also in the, in the Watch app, um, one of the things we wanted to do visually was to provide some rich animations. Um, so when you're making a recording, there's a sine wave that travels across the screen and it's, it's quite visually appealing. Um, but in order to do that on WatchOS, you have to drop down to quite low level graphics technologies and, and there's no accessibility in there. Um, so what we decided to do was to actually create two parallel user interfaces within the app. One of them has got the nice animations, um, the other one is built entirely out of standard 
watch um, controls, which are all fully accessible. Um, and the app decides which one to present to the user, depending on whether the watch is running with voiceover turned on or not. So Gordon, with all of that in mind, what would you say to those developers watching who think that making their app accessible is just a step too far? Well, I think the, the advice is probably probably split into three different three different parts. I mean, first, the kind of um, the touchy feely thing is that it's just the right thing to do. You know, it's uh, if you if you can do something to help somebody, you should probably do it. You know, that's 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 the first thing. Um, but second, it's it's really not that hard. You know, Apple have done most of the heavy lifting. Um, all their standard controls have accessibility built in. And quite often, it really is as simple as assigning a label that VoiceOver will read out to every control that's on the screen. Um, and most of your controls have probably got text that you're displaying to the user, a button's got text on it. it it's not that much more work um, to to make that accessible. You can then go the extra mile and add things like the magic touch gesture. Um, and you can, you know, the, the, like, like I explained before, there's, there's, different, there's different views in your app. You might decide this one's not relevant, so we'll go straight from this one to this one. So you can definitely take things further. But to get a basic level of usable voiceover support, I don't think it's that. It's not that hard. Gordon Morrison from Open Planet Software. I love the app and I wish you all the best with it in the future. Thank you for coming on to Double Tap TV this week. Thank you for having me. The app is called Just Press Record and it is available in the iOS App Store. Mark Aflalo and Stephen Scott with you. We take a quick break and we're going to go back to the beginning because I've got some questions for Stephen about accessibility for some other physical hardware recorders. It is Double Tap TV. Get involved. Feedback at ami.ca is our email address. And of course, on Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada. Use that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. Back in a moment. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. Thank you, as always, for being here. And thank you, of course, to Gordon from that app, Just Press Record. I am Mark Aflalo, alongside me, Stephen Scott. Stephen, we talked about hardware off the top of the show, um, and we talked about Just Press Record. I'm curious about apps and hardware that works with apps to make high-quality recordings. For example, in being in the broadcast world and having this background, I obviously often find the need to record interviews and stuff in the field. Before I was able to plug things into my iPhone, I relied on a company like Zoom. Zoom makes pretty good high quality audio recorders. People use them to record bands, people use them to record interviews, but couldn't people use those for dictation as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the great thing with all these recorders. I guess if you buy something like I've got a high end Zoom H4n recorder, which has got you know all the X Y microphone array, which gives you you know lots of stereo recording options. It seems a bit much to record you know your shopping list on, uh, so you know you wouldn't <laughs> buy it for that. But if you have it, if you're using it for work, absolutely. I mean, and something like the H four N even has extra capability because it has an audio interface built in, so you can plug it into your computer yeah. and you can use it as a recording device into your machine. So a lot of these devices, even though they're standalone recorders, they have extra functions to them. Uh, and, and that's, of course, really exciting. But, you know, you're talking about the iPhone, and I know we're going to talk a little bit about hardware, but I've got to say, I really have to stand up here for the iPhone microphone array. It's a really good microphone inside the, micro the uh, iPhone itself, isn't it? So you could just use that for your recording. Different, I guess, if you're recording yourself on guitar, uh, but if it's just a quick note, the microphone in the, the iPhone is, is more than good enough. You know, there, there are ways to enhance that as well. Yes, it is good enough, but there are ways to plug in audio interfaces, not only in your computer, but an audio interface into your iOS device or your Android device. That's right. Uh, so you're, you're doing exactly that. You're plugging in something that you can connect another device to, and that can be anything. It could be a keyboard, a guitar, a microphone, as you say. But there are some devices that you can buy, and I've got one with me here, which I take with me anywhere I go because it's my backup microphone. And it does plug directly into, at the moment, the lightning port of the iPhone. So I'm hoping that Apple don't make any major changes to the ports on these new phones and keep lightning around for a while. Otherwise, this particular device is defunct. Uh, but I've got here the Shure MV88, which comes in a lovely little... Uh, case. It's tiny, it's very small, fits in the palm of your hand. Uh, what happens is this little microphone pops up 
and it has a wonderful microphone on it. It's a, it's a single direction microphone, uh, but you can plug it in via lightning port directly into the bottom of your iPhone. And when I plug it into my iPhone, I always make, it always makes me think that my iPhone looks like a bottle of whiskey. Uh, maybe that's a Scottish thing, I don't know. But it, it, it gives me that impression because it's kind of got that, that neck at the top uh, and then you've got the body of what would be the whiskey bottle. I'm using too many whiskey analogies, but that basically is the device. It's a tiny little microphone. Uh, it comes with this little windshield, which you do need on it. It's actually much larger than the device itself, the windshield, but it's really important because you do get a lot of pops on this particular microphone without it. But the quality, the audio quality of this, even though it's tiny, I mean, it fits just in the palm of my hand, despite the size, the audio quality is immense. And, and this is the kind of thing I think is a really useful tool to have, because when you are out recording, if you want to record a soundscape or you want to record a band or an interview um, with someone, this is the kind of device you want. You maybe don't want to trust the uh, microphone inside the iPhone because for something like a high quality audio recording, it's good, but it's not as good as something like the Shure MV88. Stephen, when Apple first came out with that lightning connector and they got rid of the headphone jack, they included this little, this little guy, this little connector, which is a lightning to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. This allowed people who had traditional headphones yeah. to plug those into your phone and listen to the music. But this little guy here, which I think sells on its own for $29, which seems pretty expensive for what it does, but it's so much more useful than that. Because for example, I love using, I'm gonna pull this up over here, the Rode Wireless Go microphone system. This contains two little cubes that are tiny. They fit in the palm of my hands. They charge by USB-C. One is a transmitter, one is a receiver. The cool thing about the transmitter, it has a built-in microphone on the top that works as a lavalier mic, one of those clip-on mics, but it also features a little jack on the top if you wanna plug in an external mic. So I'm gonna clip that onto me right here, and right there, it's transmitting to the receiver on the other end. So what am I gonna do with the receiver on the other end? Well, it has a little headphone jack as well on the side. When you plug that in to the receiver, you can just connect this via that little $29 connector to your iPhone and suddenly you're sending beautiful high quality recording quality audio back to your iPhone and it automatically recognizes it because it's plugged in via that Apple certified cable. This is one of those things that retail for under $200 that are absolutely invaluable when it comes to everything that I do. I carry this no matter where I go because if I wanna record something on the fly, your phone is suddenly a great 4K high quality recorder, but the audio is never really that great. Suddenly you plug this in and you're recording incredible quality audio at the same time as your video. Definitely a cool product. And let's not even go into the fact that they just released a new version that has two receivers or two transmitters. So you can do interviews back and forth, which is really cool as well. And because it has the new version, the new Wireless Go series, has got USB-C, not just for charging, but for data as well. If you've got something like, say, an iPad Pro, which has got that USB port on it, you're able to plug that directly in and it becomes that audio interface we were talking about. That's the kind of range of options that are out there. There, there, there doesn't seem to be a shortage of them. Mark. There are so many options to choose from, which gives me a great idea for a future show, which I will not tell you about right now. On behalf of Stephen Scott, I am Mark Aflalo. Thank you for being here. We will catch you again on our next episode of Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash double tap. Hosted by Mark Aflalo and Stephen Scott. Editing Will Latar. Production assistant Wendy Kaufman. Integrated Described Video Specialist, Ron Rickford. Coordinating Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director, Production, Karen Nye. Director, Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Content Development and Programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media Inc.